Welcome to Smart Money. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. So the question right now is, what is Malaysia doing for artificial intelligence? Joining me is Dr. Carl Ng, the Director of Data Economy of MDEC or the Malaysian Digital Economy Corporation. Welcome to the show, Dr. Carl. Uh, the last time Thank we you. spoke, we uh, spoke a lot about data scientists. We spoke about the Big Data Week. I think the conversation has to evolve uh, to uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, let's talk more about AI and where Malaysia stands on this regard. Okay, since uh, the last time we spoke, we actually uh, organized our Big Data Week uh, in, um, in KL Convention Center. And based on that, we have received a lot of tremendous uh, feedback uh, from all the different participants in, in terms of artificial intelligence. A lot of people want to know more about artificial intelligence and how we are able to use this new advanced technology to really help our companies as well as uh, you know the, the industry really grows okay and um, okay so I just got back from Japan they're practically driving AI for everything from cars to home appliances to big robotics uh, uh, and and how they manage cities do you think that the pervasive ability for the Japan to use AI can it be seen here in uh, this country yes I mean definitely I think we, we do have fun uh, fundamentals that allow this to happen for example uh, through the programs that we have done, the talent development program, we have adequate number of uh, data scientists. At the same time, uh, through the digital adoption program, which was conducted uh, by MDAC as well as different agencies, uh, there's tremendous uh, opportunity when it comes to AI in, in across different sectors, from the manufacturing to the services, to the financial and, and, and other sectors as well. Uh, and recently, MDAC has been uh, given the task uh, to look at a to, de to develop a national AI framework for the country to really look at how can we actually harness the, the potential of this new technology to benefit the rakyat, the, the government as well as businesses. Now, of, of course, I did read a little bit about that uh, blueprint that uh, MDAC has been tasked to do, uh, particularly on developing an AI framework. Do you think that uh, a lot of private sector help is needed to actually you know, jump start the AI sector in this uh, part of the world? Uh, definitely. I mean, we definitely need uh, organizations who have been doing a lot of research in this area. Uh, the, the focus is very much to look at you know, how can we apply this new technology uh, into different uh, areas. And this required the help from users as well, ad adopters, who needs to uh, define what are the challenges and the problems that they face and working together with uh, solution providers to customize some of the solutions to meet their requirements. Okay, and uh, you were mentioning that AI was the key driving force behind Big Data Week Asia. Uh, what would be the uh, other the key takeaways uh, from that particular uh, event? Uh, we, we, I, I think there's a lot of different uh, lessons learned from a lot of different speakers from around the world. Uh, most, uh, company, uh, most countries are facing the same uh, issues as well. Very similar issues when it comes to implementing and adopting big data and advanced technology such as AI. I think the fundamental uh, issue is related to uh, the commitment of the top management to really use this new digital technology to really help their business to grow. Uh, and second thing is the, the awareness as well among uh, adopters who have not really you know, uh, realize the full potential of this technology because they have not done a pilot or a, a, pro a proof of concept. So the advice that we give to uh, companies is that start small, start with a proof of concept, start training your, your, your talent uh, in terms of data science or data analytics and, and even AI so, so that you're able to start to learn to how to use this and slowly grow this uh, to benefit your businesses. Um, I went to Sweden uh, a few years back and they were doing this thing called the triple helix model. I don't know whether you're familiar with this, where uh, companies, they need to have something out there. Uh, for instance, AI, they will then engage the government and the government will then play a role into sourcing individuals or universities or, or, or private you know, contractors or scientists to develop solutions for these companies. So it's a tripartite kind of yeah. agreement. And it also means that the solutions generated from the, uh, from, from, from the scientist is meant to solve a solution instead of you know, this mad scientist uh, uh, syndrome where yeah. they just do something just because they can. Do you think that that kind of model is being seen here uh, in this uh, part of the world? 
Uh, yes, I mean, there are certain extent uh, some collaboration between the university, uh, private sector, as well as the, as well as the government. Uh, but the issue is a lot of these uh, challenges are being solved uh, manageable uh, solutions. For, for example, these are pilot programs or, or proof of concept to solve uh, existing problems. Uh, but, but the challenge is really to look at, you know, how can we gather more different research institution from different multidisciplinary to solve a, a, a grand problem for mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, a problem could be related to a social problem, like for example, traffic. It could be related to, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, congestions various, and yeah. various pro problems, yeah, including healthcare for that. Including matter. healthcare as well. Right. So, so that needs to be done in a more holistic manner. Uh, requires not just one university doing this, but multiple universities doing this and work together to solve a particular uh, main, main challenges for the country. Uh, Dr. Carl, you were referencing a lot about Big Data Week, Big Data Week. Let's discuss a little bit more about this event, yes. what it encompasses, the kind of people that it attracted, and the size, of course, that it, it garnered uh, over the span of that few days that was uh, generate, uh, uh, run. Okay, uh, Big Data Week is uh, a week... Uh, it's a global festival of, of data, originated from the UK. And this is actually the fifth year running that we are hosting Big Data Week in, in Malaysia. Uh, there are other countries around the world that host this during this, this week. Uh, countries such as London, uh, European countries and South American countries as well. Uh, this year, we are able to attract um, more than 2,000 people to this Big Data Week uh, through uh, three key uh, major uh, programs. The first one is Next Big Tech uh, Asia, which is actually a, a con conference that we are able to attract more than 500 uh, uh, executive level uh, 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 participants who went to the conference to listen to other speakers speak about big data adoption and how they are able to uh, adapt and adopt big data through implementing this within their organizations. Do, is there a follow-through program where the things that were discussed, the ideas that were shared, can be applied uh, accurately and, and, and can be measured in terms of uh, uh, the applicability of all these uh, discussions and talks and forums that, that happened? So, so uh, a lot of the general discussion was, was conducted during the conference, but what we have done differently this year is, is, is that we actually hosted uh, free workshops, mm. which was uh, hosted at our ASEAN Data Analytics Exchange, ADEX, uh, for, for a duration of a few days. Uh, and this is where the participants can really come in to learn hands-on experience uh, from the real practitioners uh, in terms of big data implementation within the organization. Actually, I want to talk more about ADEX. Uh, in, uh, the last time we discussed ADEX, what it is, what it, uh, what it uh, entails. Right now, it, since it was launched last year, uh, what are the progress of ADEX in terms of churning out the necessary uh, uh, data scientists uh, th that you guys have uh, yeah. uh, set? So uh, the last time we, we spoke, uh, we spoke about the Data Star program, where it's a finishing school program to, to train our fresh graduates in terms of data science and then place them in companies so they're able to get uh, jobs related to data science, data analysts, data scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the program is running uh, the second batch now. We are quite successful in the first batch. Uh, now is the second batch. And we, we continue to receive strong support and demand for these data professionals. Uh, right now, uh, the number of uh, data professionals that we uh, have produced so far, it's, uh, to the, to, it's basically now 6,000 data professionals. Uh, and our target for the year 2020 is 20,000. Okay. I, I would, while I would like to talk about lofty goals, lofty targets, I still want to pull it down to some applicability. Which organizations or corporations are actually using data scientists, using big data, uh, using big data, data analytics? Can you, you know, perhaps specify the kind of sectors, the kind of sizes these companies are? All right. So, uh, Currently, the leading sectors are financial sectors. So if you look at the financial sectors, uh, you know, the banks, large banks, CIMB, who are partners, users, uh, data science, they actually have a large data science team, uh, Maybank, uh, even other banks as well, like Hong Leong and, and a lot of other banks actually have a data science team. Uh, apart from this, Telco, 
it's also a large number of uh, them actually have a huge data science team. Are we resigned to the fact that only big corporations can use data scientists? What about the SME sector, which forms 95% of the Malaysian businesses? All right. SME sectors, they are SMEs who are who are more on a cutting edge perspective. SMEs who are in the digital space, for example, uh, actually uses data scientists. Uh, uh, you know, I can quote you two startups who are looking at uh, so Service Hero is one of it. They're mm. actually doing uh, um, directory of SMEs uh, to match it with consumer who wants those services. They actually have a chief data scientist wow. within their organizations to really look at how to match the demand and the supply and how to optimize this matching Amazing. in the process as well. Okay. So, so companies are born in the digi digital space do realize the importance of this. Uh, and, and increasingly as well, uh, a lot of the companies who are uh, into e-commerce e marketing, for example, they may not have a data scientist, but they actually have some data science capability. They use certain tools, uh, analytics tools, to really look at what sort of profile actually uh, purchase their, their, their solutions or their products, and then using this data to, to really uh, improve their marketing efforts. Uh, final question, very short one. Uh, what can we expect from MDEC uh, going into 2018? Um, I think uh, next year will be an inst interesting year for, for the digital economy. Uh, especially from the AI perspective, you start looking at uh, new uh, technology that's uh, 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 emerging and then uh, there'll be a lot more adoption uh, coming on board uh, from a lot of different companies. Uh, some, some, that's basically the area that we'll, we'll be pushing to look at more companies to really adopt this as well as pushing our talent uh, agenda as well. We hope to see more um, uh, professionals coming into this area. All right, thank you, Dr. Carl. I've been speaking to Dr. Carl Ng, the Director of Data Economy of MDEC. Uh, but that wraps up this episode of Smart Money. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at 501Awani. Don't forget to download our app on the Google Play and the Apple App Store. I'm Ibrahim Sani. Thanks for watching and goodbye.